Sunshine Value Farm family, welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells on. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for being part of this family. You guys are amazing. We are back at the farm and it's really super exciting. I also have my co-director who should say hello to you guys. Wow. Hello, everybody. My name is co-director Grafton, part owner of Value Farm and founder, along with my co-director here. Now, it's often said, if you love what you do, you never work a day <laughs> in your life. Uh -huh. As we stand here in this glorious day, and the marvel at what we have here, mm -hmm. in front of us, beside us, behind us, <laughs> who's gonna convince me that this is not heaven on earth? You know, as a farmer, as a hardworking farming team here, mm -hmm. every time I make it back to the farm, it's just, it's just a remarkable feeling, the feel of tranquility. Yes, we're working hard. Yes, the team is working hard. Yes, it's not easy. It's not easy. But you know what? It's so enjoyable. I almost feel like I'm cheating work. <laughs> <laughs> However, we're here mm -hmm. to talk about reasons to integrate um, sheep into your mixed farming operation. Yes. And my partner is going to kick us off, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> I know you guys have watched the previous video that we talked about when we were buying the sheep in Kenya and you guys were really very curious. Some of you were really curious. Why are you buying the doppers? Why are you integrating the sheep into your mixed farm? Why did you even come with an idea of putting the sheep uh, with what we have already at Value Farm? That is a good reason, of course. It's a good reason for us to really integrate it because who doesn't love lamb? <laughs> Who doesn't love mutton? <laughs> Come on! Lamb is so sweet. And most people really love lamb in this country. I know most of you may disagree with us because of what you hear in the streets, but that is a lie. Most people really actually love the lamb because we had some, but that the, the supply was really very little. So for us to really upgrade and also get better breeds as the dopers are in the country, guys, it's an amazing feeling. Why? Because these dopers are really very, very good animals. They grow fast. Yes! Invest in genetics. As long as you get genetics that are really going to give you profits in a short period of time, why can't you invest in that? That's why we decided on bringing the dopers to Value Farm. Wow, that's so awesome. So guys, it's often said that when it comes to jewelry, <laughs> diamond is a girl's best friend. Uh-huh. But when it comes to integrated farming, mm -hmm. sheep. Sheep. Could be your best friend. It's that not your true. dog. Mm -hmm. But in terms of money-making enterprise, sheep could be your saving grace. Because there are quite a few of you out there. Mm -hmm. Though you love the goat operation. I know. That the <laughs> land you own might not love your goats. That is true. But you know the beauty about having sheep? They're far more adaptable based on the breed that you have. Mm -hmm. They're far more, I would say, uh, in terms of growth rate, in terms of feed conversion. Conversion, yeah. Right? You can definitely have an advantage there. But let's face it, many Ugandans, if you tell them consciously to go purchase sheep to eat, right. they're going to look at you like you have 10 heads. Exactly. But by the same token, when they're at home enjoying what they think is goat, they love the sheep. That is true. You understand? That is they true. They love sheep more than anything. Exactly. But there's a stigma in their brain that tells the local people here. Huh? For some reason, the sheep is for the poor. You know, there's some weird smell. smell. They convince themselves that there's a weird taste. Guess what? I love goat. But any of you that's ever eaten a male goat that was not castrated at an early age, mm. that's the animal with the weird taste. That is with true. With the funky stench to it. But by the same token, the reason we wanted to actually tell you guys more about sheep operation, number one, who wouldn't want to be the market leader? Or when you start a race, when you mm -hmm. get out of the block, do you want to be in last place or do you want to be right there at the first block? You know, Fast. although when you come around the corner, mm -hmm. right, once you come around that bend on the track, even though it looked like you're in last place, you still technically align evenly based on the spacing but psychologically mm -hmm. you want to be in the first block because you feel like you're out there by yourself at least for the first 10 seconds you have the headwind you can build up the momentum and if you actually treat your first place start as if you're in last place guess mm -hmm. what 
you're going to look back and you're going to still find yourself in first place that is as true. you're crossing the finish line. So when it comes to sheep farming, guys, the market is wide open. Open. Enough. It's so <laughs> open. We need at least 10 years to try to catch up with what Kenya is doing. Exactly. With what Kenya is already doing with Dopper. With billionaires that have been created in South Africa, America, Australia, parts of Europe, right? Especially London, all throughout the UK, Scotland, right? Even when you go to Argentina, mm -hmm. many of these big farms, if they're not running cows, cattle, they're running sheep. And in many instances, they run them together. That is true. So now, if it's good enough for France, let's go down the list. Mm -hmm. Good enough for the UK. Mm -hmm. Good enough for Germany. Mm -hmm. Good enough for Scotland. I can go on and on and on. Why not us here? In Uganda. Because let me give you guys an inside baseball secret here. Mm -hmm. Take boas. We have them. Take the savannas. Mm -hmm. We have them. Even the Kalahari Reds. We have, we have some. Them. Mm -hmm. more coming but I told my business partner here and my friend that's behind the camera about six months ago mm -hmm. if I knew then what I know now right and my brother or my son wanted to get into farming I would tell them as much as we love our pigs as much as we love, love our, our goats, goats start with sheep. sheep you start with the sheep you then integrate your goats you build up your war chest and then you go into pigs if that's how you want to approach it. Mm -hmm. However, based on the size of your pocket, mm -hmm. if you have the money and you have the reserve, then by God, you can start with pig farming all you want. Mm. If you want to go commercial and fast, and fast right? Yeah. But it, it brings us back to full circle. We need a paradigm shift here in Uganda. Yeah. Not just Uganda. Same thing in Rwanda, apart from Kenya. Not too sure about Burundi. We're still doing our market research there when it comes to sheep. Yeah. But let me tell you guys this. Sheep grow so much faster than goats. That is so true. It's not even funny. You can literally be out here in the field. Mm. A female sheep will deliver, will just start lambing. Mm -hmm. The young lamb will come out and within, she'll be in full stride. <laughs> within one it hour. It might not even slow down for more than three seconds. That is true. It'll deliver within two seconds. The, the lamb is up and running and hopping, hopping around. around. Yes. You understand? We have so many goats. We've been around goats for quite some time. Yeah. You know when you have these exotic goats, it takes a higher level of care. Yeah, it takes true. a higher level of hands-on. And if you're lucky enough to actually purchase breeds of sheep, yes, we love the Dopper and we also love the Meat Master. There's also the St. Croix. Mm -hmm. There's so many different variations, variations out there. Variations there. If you do your research and you buy your first breeding stock mm. from reputable breeders, that don't really give them any heavy medication. Mm -hmm. Seriously, you can have a flock that's more resistant. That is so true. The, you, the amount of time you need to treat your goats versus the amount of time you need to treat to your the sheep, sheep. We're talking a ratio of four to one. That is true. You do the math. Save you money on your vet bill. Save you money on your, your, your time and labor. That is true. Right? And on top of that, they don't compete with the goats when it mm -hmm. comes to feeding. That is another you know? thing, by the way. So then they literally are fishing, theoretically, mm -hmm. in different ponds. That is true. So there's no real competition there. Wow. That is really amazing. Talking about the, like, the management, as you already hinted on it yeah. already, like I feel with our experience at Value Farm, the sheep has been really very easy to manage. They go with the cows. I think you guys have not really seen them with the goats. We integrated them with the cows. That's when they go out to graze. But this sheep, let me tell you something. It is something that they manage even themselves. They go out. There's nothing like controlling them so much. Of course, we make sure that they're within our boundary, but they're just easy to maintain, easy to manage. Even the person who is really taking care of them has no stress with the sheep. So let's be honest, guys. When we first bought these sheep, they were a companion for the cows. Yeah. For the cow, not even plural. Cow. Singular, the cow. <laughs> so we bought two. Mm -hmm. They came to us very badly off, as they would say here locally in Uganda. Mm -hmm. They were looking so horrible. I mean, ticks, matted everywhere. And then Edward, who's actually our lead herdsman with the cow with division the and the mm -hmm. sheep, told us, ah, let's just keep them. If, when, you know, by the time they get to Value Farm, 
They no. get to eat the grass and mm -hmm. we get to spray. Spread we take them, care of them properly. You come back in like a month or two, you won't recognize them. That is true. That was the first thing he told yeah, me. I, I was like, are you sure? Mm -hmm. you know, he said, yes, we should keep them. So we kept them. And little by little, two turned into four. And we actually threw them against the proverbial wall. Yep. There was no real medication. There was no real treatment. We just wanted to see what they were going to do. And we also told you guys that we were going to actually test the water when it came to sheep. Yeah. About seven or eight months ago to see how that went. Yeah. Well, we, we over time, went from just having four, four to 45, almost to 50. To 50. And then we noticed when we actually would take our goats for processing, mm -hmm. the same companies we sell to we're, were actually for requesting for more sheep exactly. than goats. And when we did the, the math and the number here locally, when you buy the sheep, they typically cost half the price. Exactly. Of course, at least they used to. Mm -hmm. But something is happening, happening in Happening right now. Our fellow farmers throughout the region, even in the village, mm -hmm. they are waking up to what's really taking place within the sheep operation. That is true. Now, sheep in some instances are costing more than goats based on the size, based on the weight. And the weight, the and they breed. And understand the market mm -hmm. and the breed. Mm. So now, here's the last tidbit I'm going to leave you guys with. Mm -hmm. Pop quiz. If I were to ask you, a pure boar goat versus a pure dopper sheep, which one costs more money? If we're talking about a ram, mm -hmm. dopper, a uh, boa, male, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. Pure. Which one would you say goes for more money? I'll give you one second to think about it. Leave your comments down below. And you all, most of you are going to be wrong because you're gonna, those of you that didn't cheat and went to Google, uh -huh. you know who you are. Exactly. I can guarantee you about 75% of you guys probably chose Boas. Boas, yeah. Because that's what we know. That's what we see. That's the shiny toy on television, on yeah, YouTube. That is true. Right? They're so pretty. They're so majestic. Everybody wants the Boas. Wants to right? have them. But in reality, a pure male boar goat will cost you pure, 100% imported from South Africa. It's gonna cost you anywhere between 1,500, maximum 1,000, I would say maybe 1,800. Based on the line, it could go a little bit high. Uh, we're not talking championship pedigree, just breeding stock, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to the rams, pure doppel ram, a T4 to T5 can start between 3,800 USD, USD for one oh my God. juvenile ram. And a T5 ram could easily go for 4,200 and beyond. We're not talking championship pedigree. Mm. We're talking high quality genetics. That's true. So at the end of the day, you have an animal that's hardy, hands off, mm -hmm. it goes for more money, mm -hmm. it grows faster. You don't need to have perfect weather conditions. Conditions for it. And survive. they practically look after themselves, right? Of course, there's still some care involved. True. But the level of care and technical know-how you need with these sheep is very different. Now, we still urge you to educate yourself. You still have to care for your animal. True. If you want them to get to that top brass level, yes, you have to put time, money, care into anything you want to flourish. That is true. But by the same token, when it comes to goats, no matter how much you love your boar goats, if you're in the wrong environment, they're going to die. That is true. If Easily. you don't treat those kids the right way, they are highly mortality susceptible rate to get diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Mortality rates could be sometimes as high as like high. 30, 40, and sometimes higher based on where you are. But mortality rates when it comes to sheep, sheep, when it comes to lambing, very, very low. Very, very low. So you do your research, you your own man, you your own woman, you your own whatever pronoun you go by, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as long as you do your research, okay. you want to get into this business, or if you're already in business, mm. we strongly urge you to consider sheep as part of your operation. Oh, wow, that is really amazing. So anyone out there, if you have a sheep farm, please leave your comment down below. You never know, we shall also reach out to you so that we can be able to learn from one another. But we really appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. It is something that, you know, we share with, with everyone Last out there. Last tidbit I want to give my fellow you Gun is okay. I like to cross the border to Kenya okay. to enjoy the Namachoma. Uh -huh. When you're out there thinking you're eating goat, you're eating the dop on the grill. <laughs> the dop on the grill. That's why it's so delicious. <laughs> and by the way, the dopas are sweet. <laughs>
but we really appreciate you guys if you haven't already checked out our social media platform instagram is value farm ug facebook value farm tiktok value farm ug go see the behind the scenes and also what we really update that other side but we appreciate you guys so much tell a friend to tell a friend and do not forget to subscribe like and share till next time bye bye